Ghana is now the largest recipient of foreign direct investment in West Africa. We have some of the world's largest companies setting up shops in Ghana, and we have recently become the largest producer of gold in Africa. This is a Facebook post attributed to President Ekufuado on the affirmation of his commitment to achieving a Ghana beyond aid. The president has since received lots of commendation from followers on his page. Now, for purposes of generalization, however, we moved the same post to the Joy News page uh, just to understand the general view and the sense of, of Ghanaians on this particular statement made by the president. And here are the comments that we have received so far. And Love Emmanuel says, Mr. President, you're not serious about your government and the nation. You always think that what has been the benefits of being leading the country to produce gold. Ghana was the biggest gold producing country in the world. And you, the same people who say we are fighting for the country, you're killing our citizens. Okay, and um, he's making a lot of claims there. And uh, Luis says, funny country, foreign investors, why not invest in the talent you have? Improve on existing structures and establishment and own it as a country. All right, uh, we'll be getting some education. Uh, what exactly is foreign direct investment? We'll, we'll get you those answers. It, it appears that some uh, people may not uh, especially understand what that means. Hillary says, hope Ghana has stopped borrowing because we are self-reliant now. Ben Atom Pika says, you are the leading producer of gold and yet people are suffering. No development, poverty all over. Are you not ashamed of saying that you are the leading producer of gold? And Eugen Jojo Blanson says, largest producer of gold and, uh, sorry, uh, largest producer of gold and we can't even boast of good roads in Obwase and its environs. And this is an issue that has come up in a lot of gold mining communities and Takwa, etc. Uh, so we'll be getting you more on this, uh, my colleague. Philip Nanfuri, he's with Joy Business and he joins us with more. So, Philip, what more can you tell us about the president's remarks, facts or fiction? Um, <clears throat> Benny, thank you very much. I'll say it's fact. Um, if you look at the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD or UNCTAD, they have this report called Global Investment Trends or Global Investment Monitoring Trends. And as of 2018, when this data was all put together, it showed that um, Ghana had overtaken Nigeria as the largest recipient of FDI. I'll get to what FDI is. Exactly. But <laughs> one important thing the report says is that Nigeria can overtake Ghana in the year 2019 as it expects greenfield projects. Greenfield simply means ground up from the start. Any project that says that uses the word greenfield means beginning like fresh, new. And it says they can overtake us in, that, in the oil and gas and chemical sector in this year. So, yes, we've overtaken them. We shouldn't be too excited, but they can come back for their position. So we should be wary of that. Mm. But when we talk about FDI, it's simply an investment within a country. So let's, let's break it down this way. You have somebody in the UK or US looking at Ghana and says, mm, I want to set up something in Ghana, agricultural sector, real estate sector, manufacturing. Where do I look at? So you say, OK, let me pump in some money in agriculture. They can pump in the money and partner with a company that exists already, or they can start all over again from the ground up. That's where the green field comes in. So that's essentially FDI. It's money coming in to stay long term. There's also what we call portfolio flows. And let me just introduce that here. They all come under private sector flows. And flow just means money coming in. Portfolio flows has to go to do with like what we see in our debt market, where we borrow. So when you, see, when you hear government talking about foreign investors are moving out of the country, that's a portfolio flow. They bring it in, invest for a short period, and, and goes out. That. It's very volatile. FDI, on the other hand, comes in and stays for a long time. So their impact on our currency is mitigated because they come, they stay, they build up, they grow the business, and that's it. So that's essentially what FDI is. Mm. To put in and, and so for, for the person who made that comment that, uh, well, you're boasting of foreign direct investment, uh, it doesn't create jobs, it's not necessarily true. N it creates jobs, but it's a long-term thing. So they might come with their own people. Okay. That's one thing we need to know about FDI. But coming with their own people, they will need some people on the ground here to partner with. Um, and I'm sure you know the GIPC is always talking about these partnerships and these investment stuff. So when they come, they teach us some stuff. And that's where technical and technological transfer comes in. So there's, there's also some good in there. Not mm -hmm. only bad, but good also. So what are the determinants? Benefits? Uh, you know, uh, 
demerits if there are any of FDI. Okay, I like that. So on the uh, determinants part, there's a macro determinant and there's a micro. The micro has to do with the sector they're looking at, the firm they're looking at, the firm they want to pass now. On the macro side, I'm sure we can relate to that. The infrastructure in Ghana, the political stability, the economic stability, and all other things. So if an investor looks at your country and says, I like what's going on in Ghana. The, a new government is in power. Things are now back on track. GDP is moving in the right direction. Inflation is going downwards, and everything is okay. Then they are attracted, but they don't look at only economic stability. There are multiplicity of factors: the political stability, how much they can generate, our currency. So all these things come into play. With the benefits, I mentioned the technological and, mm. and then the transfer of knowledge and technology. Apart from that, when they grow here, employment generation, etc. On the downside, if the business grows and there are foreign owners and their local partners don't have a high shareholding, when they are taking their profits back to their country, if they want to, then we see the effects on the local currency. So <clears throat> FDI totally, yes, a stable form of private sector flows, good for an economy like ours, is projected to increase in the coming years. But what the president said, he's right based on the data from the United Nations Conference on Trade and mm. Development mm. reports on no, global think. investment trends. But if we don't take care, yeah. Nigeria will come I, back I, to I was position. coming to that. So how do we sustain um, this, you know, I don't want to call it an achievement necessarily, but, but this um, development. development that the president is touting, okay. how do we then achieve it? On, on, I'll start with the cosmetic side. The JIPC has, has been going around marketing Ghana. We should continue on that. Ghana Tourism Authority, etc. Attract people into the country. Let them see that we have a lot of stuff to give out. At the same time, we must ensure that our macro fundamentals, when they say the fundamentals are weak and it will expose you, it's not, it's, it's not just uh, speech. Yeah. If it's going wrong, investors see. And in their appraisals, they will not be happy with it. And they will go back, find somewhere else to put their money. So we must just ensure that we maintain that, and particularly political stability, as we enter an election year. Because every time, there's always that destabilization and overruns and fiscal numbers whatsoever. Just ensure that we maintain all fronts and have a good place for investors to come pumping their money long term. Mm. Because if something goes bad, they're back out. The issue of we being the largest producer of gold in Africa, is it something we should be overly okay. excited about? Because we read a comment uh, from, um, from our Facebook page, one gentleman says, Largest producer of gold. So what? The roads in Obuasi and in, in many other mining communities, nothing to write home about. We don't see it. Yeah. It seems our development of natural resources is not commensurate with our growth in other parts of the world. But from the engagements I've done, you know South Africa was leading in this gold production. They have dropped down a bit because of the challenges they are experiencing within the economy. So it's not necessarily that all of a sudden our production volumes have ballooned beyond a certain point where we've overtaken South Africa. Okay. South Africa has gone down a bit. We are doing well, but not in the magnitude, I would say, in my opinion, that should supersede South Africa. So it's much more of South Africa failing um, and not so much of Ghana winning, yes. necessarily. Yes, we are doing well, but Benis, it's, it's, it's not that enough. So if, if you look the, at the data the, from... Sorry, if the economy springs back, they're likely to... to yes, take and, and you know they've, they've listen, closed down some of their mines. So, you know... Because of the negatives of what's going on in the economy, mining has become very costly. But if the economy picks up and there are new investments in new mines whatsoever, South Africa will obviously cross us. But if you look at data from Bank of Ghana in terms of Ghana's gold exports, what you receive, it's doing well. But oil still dominates in how much we bring in. So you see that in the oil industry, there are more, they are, they are, like it's bigger, there are more projects, it's expanding. The gold is not so much in that regard. We are doing well but not in the manner that should supersede that of South Africa. So it's a balancing act there, I would say so. Thank you very much, Philip Manfru is my colleague with Joy Business. And we were, uh, if you may, fact-checking and discussing President Ekofado's statement uh, that Ghana is the largest receiver of foreign direct investment in the West African sub-region and now is the largest producer of gold in Africa. We've also been taking some of your comments on our Facebook page. You're watching News Desk with me, Benes Abubeidu Lamsa. Please don't go away. When I come back, we're talking about the National Science and Maths Quiz.